To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long-lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. The DSW Black Friday sale is on. Take 30% off almost everything in stores and online right now. Yep, you heard that right. 30% off. Stock up on new shoes, bags, and extras for you and yours from all the gift-worthy brands you love. But hurry, Black Friday can't last forever. Get to your DSW store or DSW.com ASAP to save big. Exclusions apply. Details at DSW.com. A Cookie War. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. If you don't know crumble cookies, you probably don't live in North America and or aren't online too much. That's okay, because you're here with us now to talk in depth about the company's humble and strange origins, unconventional marketing strategy, straight up Utah cookie war, and of course, its subsequent bizarre copycat cookie scam. That's a lot for the $1 billion cookie company and the ragtag scam that brought them down today on Ghost Town the Crumble Cookie Conspiracy. The story of Crumble begins with Jason McGowan, a Canadian eighth grade dropout who had no experience related to baking or food or really business, but he had an entrepreneurial spirit, one passed down from his dad. McGowan had watched his dad try to make it in Canada with a small airport pickup and drop-off business. But due to some licensing issues with the Canadian government, the company soon went under. To be good at business, the 20-something knew he had to leave his small Alberta town and go somewhere where he could learn and really thrive. So he went to America. Well, more specifically, Utah. Sleeping on friends' couches, McGowan eventually found work as a freelance web developer, even though he had never done any actual website developing, worked with code, none of that. So he took his ignorance to Google and learned web building from scratch, building a company website for a mere $800. From there, he got more web design gigs and started working in tech, eventually meeting his wife, Whitney, and building up some credibility in the tech world. Whitney's cousin, Sawyer Hemsley, was also a young entrepreneur, a student at Utah State University studying business. McGowan invested in one of Hemsley's startups and, well, the thing went belly up. But McGowan admired his cousin by marriage's ambition, and in 2017, the two decided to formally go into business together. After talking through dozens of ideas, the two cousins decided that maybe cookies were the thing. Random, right? I couldn't find out why they hopped aboard the cookie train, but according to the Crumble website, McGowan and Hemsley, quote, teamed up on a quest to bake the perfect chocolate chip cookie. They dreamt of bringing people together over a box of the best cookies in the world. Inspiring, no? But first, the two actually had to learn how to bake the best cookie in the world, literally. And let's just say it took time for these two guys to get it right. At 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., even later, the cousins would go through hundreds of pounds of dough using trial and error, making cookies so bad that in a later interview, McGowan called the desserts the two had produced, quote, flat, raw, and disgusting. Meanwhile, two local competitors, Dirty Dough Cookies and Crave Cookies, were teasing their own openings with suspiciously similar aims making and selling delicious cookies for profit. We'll get to them later. In the meantime, McGowan decided to apply some tech knowledge to his abysmal cookie making using a concept called A-B testing, which is basically testing two versions of a product and only changing one element at a time, a kind of control and variable process. 
The two made two types of cookies and would go to local gas stations asking people which cookie they liked better. Then, based on this gas station feedback, they'd tweak and refine their recipes. Five months of this, and the team finally produced their very soft and very massive milk chocolate chip cookie. So they finally had a product. But now they needed a storefront. With all of McGowan's personal savings, they leased a commercial space in Logan, Utah, at $800 a month. Because they had very little money, they could only offer one product at their store, and it was, you guessed it, that milk chocolate chip cookie. But wildly, a random store in Logan selling one thing, a chocolate chip cookie, actually gained a following. Through social media, word of mouth, and having pretty good cookies, the store became successful, and drumroll, they added a second cookie into the mix, if you can call it a mix. They're now famous chilled pink sugar cookie. Crumble cookies continued to sell out, and the cousins couldn't keep up with the demand. Taking a note from the fashion industry, Hemsley had an idea that they do drops. Like any sought-after fashion company, drops are when brands release their products in limited quantities or for a limited time, creating a scarce and lucrative rush to buy the product, as it would not last long. So Hemsley applied this logic to Crumble, creating a rotating menu. On Sunday mornings, Crumble would release six different exclusive cookie flavors, one for each day. The, quote, drop created buzz, even though these cookies personally do not sound the most appetizing or exciting, with titles like cowboy cookie, fruit pizza, and sugar shark. The cookies themselves looked good, huge, chunky, and soft, usually with a thick frosting or glaze with a pop of color. These Instagrammable cookies were shared far and wide, and so, of course, people wanted them. Demand shot through the roof for a time. It became a kind of exclusive crumble club, with Gen Z and millennials sharing the drops online and describing their experience of eating them. The cookies gained a bit of a cult following, and soon the cousins opened another store, and then another. And then the company franchised, opening 15 locations in their first two years of business and doubling down on their sleek branding and vibey social media presence. According to Bon Appetit, quote, Instead of relying on recipe know-how, the two leaned into social media as the vehicle that could make the company successful. They bet big on TikTok, where the company now has 6 million followers, more than Taco Bell and Starbucks combined. In 2018, it began announcing new flavors every week in reality competition promo-style videos using tight close-ups, quick cuts, dramatic EDM soundtracks, and slow motion. On Crumble Cookie's third anniversary, the business had over 100 locations. The strong branding and online following made the company seemingly pandemic-proof, with online sales going up and, if you can believe it, even more stores being opened. In 2022, Crumble opened an additional 400 locations, basically one store per day, sometimes more, in that year alone. But also in 2022, Crumble didn't seem to be slowing down. In fact, it was forcing out competitors, suing Crave Cookies and Dirty Dough, two early cookie companies in the United States District Court of the District of Utah, alleging that the defendants, quote, had unique ties to Crumble and had a, quote, confusingly similar marketing and business model. The suit continued, saying, quote, Crave deliberately adopted the infringing trade dress, knowing and intending that the relevant public, including consumers, would likely be confused, thereby unfairly diverting sales from Crumble to Crave. Confounded by the sudden litigiousness of these wholesome, fun-seeming companies, the legal entanglement was deemed the, quote, Utah cookie wars by those following the controversy. But the Utah cookie wars did not last long. In 2023, the lawsuit against Crave was eventually dropped, and the Dirty Dough suit was settled out of court. But that wasn't the only trouble Crumble got into in 2022 and 2023. Firstly, the cookies began coming under fire for being, well, very bad. Social media began turning on Crumble, saying that the cookies looked and tasted not as advertised. And then Bon Appetit got in on the Crumble hate, publishing a review of the brand. Were they biased? You tell me. The piece was titled, Dear Lord, Crumble is supposedly America's fastest growing dessert shop. Here's a little excerpt. Quote, Crumble was recently deemed the fastest growing chain of dessert shops in the U.S. by the New York Times. The big contradiction of the cookie empire, which has more than 750 locations nationwide, the cookies are, by many accounts, spectacularly bad. It goes on to say, quote, the company has created cookies that photograph well and that are highly anticipated. But in the end, it's quite widely acknowledged that the cookies are not amazing, not even great. Good is generous and OK is a stretch. Then in December 2022, the U.S. Department of Labor fined 11 Crumble cookie franchises for 46 violations of child labor laws. 
think assigning underage employees to extra shifts and tasks involving, quote, potentially dangerous ovens and machinery, to name a few. Crumble HQ eventually issued a statement apologizing and affirming their commitment to, quote, a safe and welcoming work environment, and the Crumble franchisees were fined over $57,000 in total for the violations. After this, seven locations closed in Utah, Georgia, Florida, and California, and the brand's cachet was going down fast. At the end of 2023, Crumble Cookies got rebranded as Just Crumble, like Prince, but for cookies, and revealed a new text-based logo that looks more like a dating app than a cookie seller. They even invented a typeface for their logo, Crumble Sands. In January 2024, Crumble launched their first non-cookie item, Cinnamon Square. Exciting. They also partnered with Olivia Rodrigo to create a Guts cookie and seemingly have big plans for the future. Despite its controversies, Crumble is still going strong. It's one of the most followed brands on TikTok still, selling more than $1 million in cookie revenue every day at their almost 1,000 locations. But nothing would prepare Crumble for what would happen in September of 2024, when it faced one of the most bizarre attacks on the company and product that they had ever seen. A cookie catfish or conspiracy? I promise I'll explain it all after this break. Hi, hello. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? How's it going out there? We're checking in. This is the check-in. Wow. Mm. We would like to say hello to anyone listening, supporting Spreading the Good Word of Ghost Town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I might have a review to read. Oh, And I have a review to talk about as well. So So there'll be some reviews. Some reviews. Some reviews coming. I feel I feel like yours is gonna be more positive than mine. Uh oh. Yeah, uh oh. (laughs) But uh I always speak positively about our government. Oh, do you? Yeah. Especially, especially the mayors. Mm -hmm. You know, our mayors, they had their cookie empires. They did, did they? Oh yeah. Hmm. Did not pan out. Um, you know, cookie empires come and go. This mayor was the CEO of a cookie called Giggles, a British-based cookie in the 80s, maybe. (laughs) What? And they were like, how about Giggles? Oh. I think Giggles is great if you would like to kidnap. um, A a child? Yeah, Yeah. and you're like, let's just name the product the thing. Yeah, it sounds like it has marshmallow. Does it have marshmallow in it? Just got impulse It's it's too vanilla- Cookies filled with fudge and vanilla cream in the middle. Mm. Usually, like British, you know, cookie bakeries, the baked goods or and candy are pretty great. Yeah, generally that's speaking. True. But uh, giggles, giggles didn't last. And Chris Hernandez is behind that. Oh, one. hello, yeah. and thank you. Now, this one I remember. Hmm. I remember the packaging. They were pretty good cookies called Almost Home, and they look <laughs> like it has kind of like a Pepperidge. Farm, you know, it's Nabisco. It had like a Pepperidge mm-hmm. Farm, cozy look. sounds cozy, very cozy. Yeah. There's like almost like the stitching where mm-hmm. it's almost home, mm-hmm. like it's almost mm-hmm. like a knitted mm. quilt or something like that. Uh, this is a very 1980s, 1990s cookie. I thought mm. it was a good cookie. I guess uh, people don't like home, mm. so. But I'll tell you who loved being the CEO, Marissa Rothermill. Hello, and here's another fun one, Magic Middles. <laughs> What's in the middle? Magic. Oh. Didn't you... <laughs> Title didn't say it all. Just wanted like a cream this filling is or like a, a fudge. Keebler, a Keebler jam. Wow. Okay. A Keebler joint. Hmm. Another thing that these brands of things exist and for some reason they're just not there anymore and you don't hmm. register they're not there anymore. You're mm-hmm. not like, I need my magic middles. Yeah. I'll tell you who also is broken hearted. Matthew Clemens Loray. Sorry. And this mayor was like... Go big or go home. Oreo Big Stuff 1F. Oh, I remember. Okay, oh, this yeah. is the first one that actually rings a bell yeah. in my brain. It's like you want to get stuffed. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I, listen, that's the answer. I always want to get stuffed. I don't, uh, need, to, I don't need any context. Uh-huh. Okay? Just want to get stuffed. And that only lasted from 84 to 91. Hmm. So that was an old, like an old, pretty old school. Hmm. I was only in my mid to late 30s when that's it, it. When it that's ended. That's it. Just yeah. a young buck. It's our mayor, Casey Weber. Hello. And this next mayor was like, Fig Newtons? Nah. How about Apple Newtons? 
Strawberry Newtons, mm-hmm. Raspberry Newtons. Mm-hmm. Love all those Newtons. Another Nabisco joint. Yeah. But people are always like, it's fig or nothing. Which no, it's like I know. fig? I no, know. Raspberry Newton, amazing. I remember those multi-flavored fruit Newtons. Yeah. They, they were probably, great. I, I think probably what happened is people were like, no, this is better, but I'm so used to some reason. Who eats mm-hmm. figs? Yeah. Get out of here. That's right. But they are kind of good yeah. as an option. It's like Munchausen by proxy. But the Fig Newton is holding us captive. Is that right? Well, this mayor <laughs> has held us captive for a little while. It's Kelly Meehan. Hello. Who I hung out with uh, when I was in Philadelphia. She oh, came to yeah? one of my stand-up oh, shows. Oh, my God. Her that's husband. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She was, there was, she was getting crowd work done. She was, mm. hand, she was handing it right back to the... I, I didn't do it. that because I don't, I don't impose on... Well, I did. I imposed on other people. Mm-hmm. But, not Kelly and her husband. Mm-mm. So we hung no. out, and, and uh, I was like, wouldn't it be great if Rebecca was here? That would be and great. And she's like, Rebecca? I was like, yeah, the, the <laughs> other the person, host on Ghost Town. The, the woman voice. <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, she's I, like, guess, sure. I guess. I guess? Sure. But the good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the A. That's what she was saying. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, that's Kelly Meehan. Hello. And this mayor was like... More Oreos. This is uh oh Oreo. Oh no! It was uh, chocolate on the inside and vanilla as the cookie, so the inverse. Whoa, switcheroo, yeah. surreal. Yeah. So uh, people were like, "We don't, don't want, want this. that. That's not the cookie we want. No, that's why the would you make the cookie we don't want? That's what the uh, the uh, the huge uh oh mm, yeah. was the cookie itself. Yeah. And that's courtesy of Mayor Cat Joselle. Hello. This one you might remember. And hmm. This mayor hopes you do too. Teddy Grahams. Oh, yeah. Teddy oh, Grahams of yeah. bear witches. Huge part of my childhood. Eating animal. Just mm-hmm. eating the heads crunch, off. Crunch, 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 crunch. Eating the heads off Give me bears. another bag. Give me another box. Give me those bears. <laughs> well, you were the only one because the brand did not last. <laughs> well, it, it tasted like a, like a shellacked sugar cardboard. Yeah. So it's I understand that. But good. But I like them. That's from Mayor Ashley Matson. Hello. And then our governor, mm, our mm, 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 governor, mm, mm, mm. just flying in a plane made of all these cookies. Mm. She's, she's, she flies a cookie plane. Ooh. She's got she's got a cookie copter. Mm. And she, the chocolate chip falls off every now and again. She can fix it. Don't worry. And she gets a piece of all of it. And then these cookies, they just get they they just get decimated. Mm-hmm. And she's like just like ha 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 ha. And moves on to the next thing. Exactly. There's like layers of cookie sediment on her property, and you can see like geologically the different types of cookies that she's crushed <laughs> and she's warded over. She was like off with their heads. Yeah, the Teddy Graham heads. Exactly. <laughs> she's like, I ordered this too long ago. Yes. Be done. She loves the beheading of a cookie bear. Animal crackers? Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be our governor, Avian, Avian Noble. Noble. If you want no ads, no chit chat, bonus episodes, just the good stuff. Seven days free. Head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. You want to talk about your review and then I'll talk yes. about my review? Yes. So I... I have to mention this because uh, I see a lot of immersive theater and I'm uh, a lot of the times not as uh, enthused about it after I see it. But I just saw this incredible show called Great Gold Bird. It's uh, called An Immersive Wander Play by Twin Alchemy Collective. And they are associated with Hatch Escapes and Scout. They are associated with Hatch Escapes and Scout Expedition Company, which I've had great experiences with also. And uh, the Wander Play itself is written and conceived of by Katie Green, which I immediately stalked, whom I immediately stalked because I was like, who is this woman? I need to know more about her. Great Gold Bird is this wonderful immersive theater experience that takes you uh, online, offline, online again, different parts of Los Angeles. I don't often enjoy immersive theater experiences because they don't like go the distance because they don't attend to every detail and this one you start with an email and you start sleuthing online and eventually that gives you a code and that takes you i don't want to say too much but it takes you offline into a different space and a different space and you traverse a lot of los angeles to kind of figure out the mystery at hand and it was so engaging and so fun uh, that I highly recommend it if you're in Los Angeles um, or come to Los Angeles and do it because it will take you around town. It's very um, retro, but also evocative of the spirit of Los Angeles. We talk a lot about theater in LA on this podcast, and I have to plug it because it was so 
great. Um, so it's called Great Gold Bird. You can find more information about tickets and the show concept itself at greatgoldbirdbird.com. Oh, this won't be so great. Oh, no. Will it be gold? No, maybe a bird like bra- bronze, a rusty oh, bronze, maybe. Okay, here we go. I've tried a number of times, but I can't get past the confusing middle of the show. Three stars. Okay. Okay. That's not we'll bad. take it. Yeah, we will take we'll it. We'll take crawl it. Crawl my hands and knees for that one. Mm-mm-mm. Well, we are in the thing that this person is talking yeah. about. Yeah. And if they hate about. other parts of this, they're going to hate this one. I find the beginning so interesting when Rebecca talks about the background and history of the place. Mm. And then the podcast comes back from a commercial and they keep talking about mayors. <laughs> Maybe longtime listeners get it and love it, but as a new listener, I'm confused and bored and taken out of the story. That's uh, Joanne CV in the US and A. Let me tell you something, Joanne. I'm in a mood today. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just the, gonna say I'm one good thing. cop today. Yeah, yeah, I'm bad cop today. Yeah. I'm going to say one thing. I will never stop talking about our mayors ever, 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 not for you and not for anyone. So take that back to <laughs> iTunes and. I think it's Give us Apple, another. <laughs> it's called Apple Podcast now. I don't know what year you think it is. <laughs> I'm in a fugue it's not state. 20... I'm in an anger fugue state. Just go back to Apple Podcast and give us a four star review now. Thank you very much. Uh, do we do appreciate any review that you give? Yes. Mm-hmm. So for anyone out there listening, you're here right now. The break. This is all the break, mm-hmm. and this is what we like doing the podcast. We like talking about yeah, things, like just sorting things out, yeah. hashing it out, and then we go back. This is us. Things. So if you don't enjoy this, and some my I might fast forward this on another show, maybe but I generally tend to listen to everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm lazy, but just uh, hit that fast forward button. Yeah, That's it's all. free. It's free. Yeah, we do this for no money. Yeah. So just fast forward. In will fact, ya? if I lost money parking today, so Jason lost money parking today. So <laughs> fast forward, Joanne. But also thank you. But also thank you so much. Please never stop listening. We'll do better. We'll do better. You want to get back to it? Let's get back to it. After some big missteps, a cookie war, and a franchise crackdown on child labor, Crumble was still going strong. And though it only had physical stores in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico, the brand had a vibrant and dedicated social media following worldwide. Again, not really because of the quality of the product, but the attention-grabbing brand marketing and the photogenic nature of the giant, bright cookies. So on September 27th, 2024, Australian Crumble fans were delighted when a TikTok user named Crumble Sydney began uploading posts pretty much identical to the ones posted on Crumble's official TikTok, advertising, quote, Crumble is landing in Australia, one day pop up store, Sunday, 27th of September, 12 p.m. till sold out. The account said that they were bringing cookies from the States to Australia for a -a once-in-a-lifetime cookie extravaganza, my words, not theirs, and continued to promote the event held in North Bondi. Originally scheduled for September 27, 2024, the pop-up was pushed to the 29th due to, quote, flight delays. On the 29th, hundreds of Aussies flooded the pop-up location, waiting in a line that was over an hour to purchase five cookies max. The cookies, which sell in the U.S. for about $5 a piece, were now being sold for a staggering $12, that's 12 U.S. dollars, at an almost 300% markup. The high price was, of course, a red flag for those waiting to purchase, but hey, they were already there, they were already excited, what more could go wrong? Well, the cookies turned out to be worse than even the best version of the crumble cookie, which to me seems not that good. Many of the attendees took to TikTok reporting that the cookies were stale, brittle, mushy, and in a word, disgusting. Crumble fans all wondered what went wrong. It didn't take long to find out. By studying the videos on Crumble Sydney's TikTok, which according to Food & Wine has since been wiped clean, including their formal response to the scam accusations, fans realized that there was, in fact, no relationship between the actual business Crumble and the pop-up. And while the cookies seemed to be made by Crumble, online sleuths deduced through language and eventually by an admission by the account that the cookies were bought in Hawaii, hung out in a box for four to six days, and then sold to Australians for $12 a piece. Now, it made sense that the cookies were bad, not to mention any legalities surrounding the import of hundreds of stale cookies from the U.S. to Australia. The internet was outraged, and Crumble Sydney was labeled one giant scam. In the days following the pop-up, Crumble Sydney released a statement on TikTok, which has since been deleted and replaced with a Google Doc, which I should say also has been deleted. 
I've pieced together from news outlets that the statement attempted to give an explanation as to who they are and what all went down. They said they, quote, never claimed to be an official crumble store and that, quote, this was clearly stated in our bio and in our comments. But people didn't buy it. In fact, the way the account released information, important details, and the way that it marketed itself, Crumble Sydney seemed to have been doing the opposite, trying to seem like it was a part of Crumble in order to gain attention and visibility for their pop-up. While their backup TikTok account now reads, not endorsed by Crumble, just fans importing, it used to simply include the day, time, and location of the pop-up. The statement by the Crumble Sydney account went on to say that hundreds of the cookies had been purchased while on a trip to Hawaii and then brought back to Australia in luggage. It attested that everything the pop-up had done, including using professionally shot photographs of the cookies and mimicking the Crumble branding, was, quote, legal. Also, the document stated that Crumble Sydney had adhered to the Crumble storage requirements, which advertises that the products can still be consumed after three days if kept in an airtight container. Quote, we kept them to these requirements. Some were warmed to enhance their texture, which is what Crumble does as well. The statement concluded, quote, we apologize that they don't live up to expectations. However, they are just cookies at the end of the day. The real Crumble cookies also issued an official statement. That was surprisingly, though vaguely, positive. Quote, while the pop-up in Australia was not sponsored by Crumble, we love seeing excitement for Crumble around the world. We look forward to expanding to other countries in the future. Information about new international locations will be shared through our official Crumble communication channels. Crumble co-founder Sawyer Hemsley also personally addressed the scandal on TikTok. Quote, you need to try them fresh, he said. P.S. This pop-up is not affiliated with Crumble Cookies. But the most interesting thing to me about this whole situation is how little the pop-up actually profited from this grand gesture of trucking all of these cookies across the Pacific, getting screamed at by thousands of TikTokers, in addition to getting themselves into a highly publicized legal battle. Part of their Google statement read, quote, This event was never about profit. We aimed to bring the cookies to crumble fans. We did not aim to make money. And that is true. Given the airline tickets, the original price of cookies, the location, the labor, people estimate that Crumble Sydney probably only made about $1,000, and that's being generous. So in that one way, Crumble Sydney was kind of truthful, that a disastrous, overpriced, and probably illegal pop-up that made thousands angry all over the globe wasn't in it for the money. No, just a little piece of the Crumble cookie dynasty. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. So good, so good, so good. What's better than Black Friday deals? Rack Friday deals at Nordstrom Rack. That's right. For a limited time, take an extra 40% off red tag clearance for everyone on your list. Save on UGG, Vince, Free People, and more. With an additional 40% off Nordstrom Rack's already reduced prices, we're talking amazing savings on your favorite brands. All sales final and restrictions apply. So bring your gift list and your wish list to your nearest Nordstrom Rack today. To make switching to the new Boost Mobile risk-free, we're offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. So why wouldn't you switch from Verizon or T-Mobile? Because you have nothing to lose. Boost Mobile is offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. No, I asked why wouldn't you switch from Verizon or T-Mobile. Oh. Wouldn't. Uh, because you love wasting money as a way to punish yourself because your mother never showed you enough love as a child? Whoa. Easy there. Yeah. Applies to online activations. Requires port in and auto pay. Customers activating in stores may be charged non-refundable activation fees. Hey, this is Paige from Giggly Squad, and this episode is brought to you by Nordstrom. It's a season of wonder all the way at Nordstrom. You'll find the best gifts for everyone you love, including tons of ideas under $100 and gift experts to help. 
Wondering what to wear? They have everything from cozy styles to party perfect looks, along with free style help from their stylist. Plus, they'll make your shopping easy with services like in-store order pickup, gift wrap options, free shipping, and returns. Discover the wonder of the holidays today in stores and at Nordstrom.com. Nordstrom's Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals are on now. Enjoy huge savings on styles from UGG, Free People, Barefoot Dreams, and more. Up to 60% off. Bombas presents unsolicited gifting advice. Number one, if they say not to get them anything, get them something. Two, underwear is a great gift, just not for your boss. And three, those absurdly soft Bombas socks and slippers you've been eyeing for yourself? They'll love those. And the fact that for every item you purchase, another is donated to someone who needs it, they'll love that even more. Go to bombas.com slash ACAST and use code ACAST for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash ACAST, code ACAST.